Trinity, three in one. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty oh God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ, as Lord and ourselves, as your slaves, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, God. We 
Let us read our psalm in unison. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not be silence. Before him, there is a consuming flame, and around about him, a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is just.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. After that, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Epiphany means a revealing, a sudden and surprising moment of revelation. In Jesus' story and in the church year, it begins with the visit by the Gentile foreigners to the infant Jesus. Jesus is revealed to the world beyond Judaism. The season after the Epiphany ends with the Transfiguration on the mountaintop, witnessed by Peter, James, and John. This story does not fall on the heels of last week's Gospel about Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. In the Gospel of Mark, this comes some eight chapters later after Jesus has had a heart-to-heart -heart with his friends about what is coming and what will be expected of his followers. They, too, will have to pick up their cross and follow in his footsteps. As is usual in Mark's bare-bones prose, we are not given extra details like what it was Jesus was intending. He often went off, away from the crowds to pray, but I doubt that that was his only thought here. He needed Peter and John and James to see something, to understand something. He needed them to see his true nature. I believe he also hoped that they would see something about themselves. Some theologians maintain that God did something to Jesus on the mountain. I totally disagree. New Testament scholar Daniel Kirk agrees with me. In an article on the Transfiguration, he wrote, 
later Jewish tradition would reflect on primal humanity as possessing this kind of divine glory created in the image and likeness of God. When someone looked at us in our original created state, they would have seen the shining glory of God. God didn't put something new into or onto Jesus on the mountaintop. Jesus accessed and revealed what was already there, and it was so powerful that others could see it. I do believe that he also wanted them to know that his purpose here, the purpose of the Incarnation, was to reveal the nature of humankind, that forgotten image of God. We reflect this idea in our Eucharistic prayer that says that we would be restored to the glory intended for us. If the point of this story were that God could, at a moment's notice, fundamentally change our nature, then why would we bother to work to grow in knowledge and grace? If, however, God's intent here is to open our eyes to show what we already are, but that we have somehow been unable to access or remember, then we have every motivation to pursue self-realization as participants in Christ. If this amazing, dazzling light exists in us as well, what will it take to set it free? It may be as simple or as difficult as believing it about ourselves. I don't want this story to happen just high on a mountaintop, inaccessible to us down here on the ground, as if it were beyond us and something that happened only to Jesus. I want this story to happen in the low places, in the ICUs and the break rooms in which exhausted nurses and doctors grab a quick nap or power up with one more cup of coffee, seeking strength to keep doing what they do. I want someone to shine with glory for them to see and be strengthened by it. I want this story of revelation of glory to happen in overcrowded prisons where hope and dignity struggle to survive. Who could be the one to start to shine in such a place. I want this story to change how refugees are seen and treated. Imagine if every one of them in camps in Syria or in cages along the U.S. border were suddenly glowing with God's light. I think that would make a difference, and I think it would be a good thing. I really do. Let us stand and confess our faith using the words of the ancient church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us all take a seat and a nice big deep breath and enter into prayer. Most holy God, you have gathered us to be your church and shown us your glory. You have given us work to do, to love our neighbors as ourselves and to be your heart and hands in the world. May we do this work with courage and joy. blessings of this life, for the courageous doctors and nurses who continue tirelessly to care for the sick, for researchers who bring more and more vaccines to us, for the beauty of sparkling snow and all the other wonders of this planet. Thank you. 
for healing and hope. May we be good stewards of all of our blessings. God of mercy and compassion, we lift up before you this day all who suffer in body or mind or spirit. Those who are sick, those who are victims of hatred and racism, those who grieve, and those who have lost hope. May they feel the power of your love and be filled with your healing grace. all these things in Jesus' name. Let us confess our sins against our neighbor and against God. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Um, peace be to all of you watching this on various screens. A reminder that this uh, Wednesday is, this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. That means the beginning of Lent. It also means that I will be on the front steps of Trinity Church with ashes to go at noon and five. We will also have, at the time of our usual evening prayer service on Wednesday, an Ash Wednesday service, the link to the Zoom call will, will be found in your uh, Trinity in Touch and the prayers as well. I hope that many of you can join us and come drive by and have some ashes to begin a thoughtful Lent. And walk in love 
as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you within our souls and lives. And as we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you 
together with your faithful people, gathered as we are able. Let us never be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly Father, Father, you, you have, have graciously accepted us as living members of, of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. And you and have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us, us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The world now is too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. May your eyes be so blessed you see God in everyone, your ears so you hear the cry of the poor. May your hands be so blessed that everything you touch is a sacrament, your lips so you speak nothing but the truth with love. May your feet be so blessed you run to those who need you, and may your heart be so open so set on fire that your love, your love, changes everything. And may the blessing of God, who created you, loves you, and sustains you, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.